In a recent review topic of the week in uh, Jack, investigators reporting what they believe is compelling evidence of the advantage of multiple arterial bypass grafting compared to the use of a single arterial conduit. And I am with the, one of the co-authors of this particular paper, which is Dr. John Puskas, who is chair of cardiothoracic surgery, Mount Sinai Beth Israel, and uh, director of the surgical coronary revascularization unit there for Mount Sinai Health System. Am I correct? You are. Good oh, morning. Excellent. Good morning. Now, we have a topic here that there just appears to be a clear uh, contradiction between the proven benefits of arterial grafting and the very limited use of arterial conduits in everyday clinical practice. Why? Well, and should this change? This is a, a critically important question. Um, there are layers of answers. Some of the reasons <laughs> are nice and some of them are not so nice. Um, I think the nice reason, uh, if you will, uh, the understandable or excusable reason is that we're, we surgeons um, are under extreme pressure uh, to perform a quick, simple operation that gets the patient out of the hospital. We are judged and often paid based on short-term metrics. Um, hospitals in particular now are penalized for patients who have a deep sternal wound infection after a coronary bypass operation. In the United States, CMS in its wisdom has chosen to designate deep sternal wound infection a so-called never event which means it should never happen, and if it does, it's someone's fault, and they won't pay for it. So the care provided to a patient who is readmitted with a deep sternal wound infection is not reimbursed by CMS. That means the hospital eats the cost of a readmission, a reoperation, et cetera. Uh, that hospital is likely to be the surgeon's employer. Right. So the surgeon's contract uh, and all of his incentives will be based on avoiding that, among other uh, adverse events in the early post-operative period. The hot, neither the hospital nor the surgeon are rewarded for extra years of life that are added to a patient's um, lifespan uh, by choosing multiple arteriographs because those years of life happen years after the patient's been discharged from hospital. And that's what the data show. That's exactly right. The data clearly show that beginning at about five years, survival curves diverge uh, between patients who have multiple arterial grafts versus a single arterial graft. Has anyone gone to CMS just to say, are you guys paying any attention whatsoever? I mean, look at the data. So, uh, it's hard to talk to the government. It's logistically challenging. Who do you speak to? How do you make this happen? Yeah. It, it's, it's a difficult problem. It is one that uh, Society of Thoracic Surgeons is addressing through its um, Government uh, Relations Committee. Um, it should be one that uh, AHA and ACC uh, work together towards because after all these patients originate in cardiology practices and go back to those cardiology practices. It's actually the cardiologist 10 years post-op that is dealing with the failed vein grafts, not the surgeon. Now, in this particular paper, what are you hoping, but besides explaining the data, what are you hoping that maybe readers will change? Yes. Given the fact that the, everything seems to be working against them, is that even possible? I think it is. To be perfectly honest, surgeons are motivated primarily by their patient's well-being. Uh, and we believe uh, that arterial grafting is superior to single arterial grafting with multiple vein grafts. Uh, that evidence is becoming almost incontrovertible. Um, we do not yet have a large prospective randomized trial demonstrating that, but there are numerous large series of patients, carefully propensity matched or multivariably matched, that demonstrate conclusively and, and consistently that survival benefit is there and it's meaningful. It's a substantial benefit uh, for patients who have double grafting with internal mammary grafts versus single internal mammary grafts. Interestingly, and one of the important points of this paper, arterial grafts seem to have a rank order of benefit. The internal mammary artery graft to the LED is most important. Another arterial graft to the left system, to the circumflex system, is second most important. Arterial grafts to the inferior wall, to the right coronary circulation, are less important and indeed may be dangerous if the extent of native artery stenosis is not tight. Uh, but in a setting where you have a tight right coronary stenosis and graftable vessels on the left side, all arterial grafting really should be standard of care. That operation is performed in, a, in low single digits percentages of cases in North America. Dr. Peskis, are there ways to avoid problems afterwards? Can we make bypass grafts last longer with medication? Is that the well, question? Well, that or if you have any kind of deep infection, is there a way to avoid that? How, so do, we, that how simply... do we avoid the deep sternal wound infections? There are techniques, surgical techniques, um, 
that are, are associated with lower risk of deep personal wound infection. I think first we have to select the patients carefully. Uh, double internal mammary artery harvesting is most risky for deep sternal wound infection in patients who are morbidly obese, have uncontrolled diabetes, emphysema, uh, and actually female gender uh, seems to be associated with this. So that a morbidly obese diabetic female smoker may not be the lady, the patient treat. that should have double internal mammary artery grafts. On the other hand, that patient can still have multiple arterial grafts because the radial arteries may be used. And as a second or third arterial graft, a radial artery may in fact be as good as a, a right internal mammary artery graft. Uh, so there really isn't an excuse in a large majority of patients for sending that patient out of the operating room with a single arterial graft. And you talked about the fact there is no randomized data. Is this a, a trial that would ever be funded or conducted? Not in North America, but it has been funded in Britain. Oh, uh, David good. Taggart uh, has completed enrollment uh, in a large trial, 3,000 patients enrolled uh, in uh, Britain and Europe, um, and uh, we've now passed almost the five-year mark in follow-up. He published one-year results about two years ago, uh, demonstrating that the early outcomes were similar between patients, as you would expect them to be. That's to say that harvesting double internal mammary artery grafts does not cost the patient an added mortality risk right. in the perioperative period. There was a 1.3% absolute increase in risk of deep sternal wound infection or sternal healing problems in the double mammary group versus a single mammary group. So that's what we're looking at. It's not a never event. It's an infrequent event. It's about 1.3% more common with double mammaries than single mammary. Um, at one year, of course, we wouldn't expect to see a difference in survival, and there was none. Uh, event rates were very low in terms of uh, uh, myocardial infarction or stroke and the quality of surgery performed seems to have been very high, so follow-up of those patients over time will be very informative. Uh, that study is funded for a 10-year follow-up period, wow. and they have a planned um, uh, early look at the data at five years. And so we're looking forward to seeing those data from Dr. Taggart, um, I would expect within the next 12 months. Well, it, it's not going to be 10 years before you can go see this paper in Jack. And as a matter of fact, it's in the October 13th issue. It is a review topic of the week, and it is entitled The Choice of Conduits in Coronary Artery Bypass Surgery from Dr. Paskus here at uh, AHA. And for Cardiosource World News Interventions, I'm Rick McGuire.